Well, hello, welcome back to Tail 3 Cabins. We've been traveling with our travel trailer quite a bit lately, and we've been going exclusively to mostly state parks when we stay in our, our travel trailer now. And there's two things that are always missing when I'm out there. One is we need to have a kayak because we've been near a lot of water, a lot of little rivers and a lot of lakes. And the other would be nice to have a bicycle. We have larger size bicycles that just aren't easy to tote around here. Um, I could put something on the back, but I just don't want the weather getting into them and the stuff flapping in the breeze and taking a chance on someone stealing it or losing it. So I was looking for a portable option where I can get something possibly in the back of my pickup truck. So I've reached out to a company called KBO because they had this new series of bicycle coming out, a new e-bike that just came out about a month and a half, two months ago, and it's called their K-Series. It's a folding bike, it's compact, Another thing that I was looking for is uh, a wide variety for size. So my wife is a little over five feet tall and I'm six feet two. So something that she could still ride and get on and then something that I can make the adjustments and that I can get on also. So I reached out to KBO to see if I could get a K2 bike. And the difference between the K1 and the K2 series is basically the K2 is uh, considered a step through. It has a little bit of an indentation and then the K1 comes straight across over here just a a little bit higher but really not much of a difference other than that so they were nice enough to send me one of their bikes i've been using it now for a couple weeks it showed up well packed in a good sturdy box uh, it didn't have anything protruding through the box like uh, forks or uh, wheel hubs or the kickstand or the handlebars everything was intact nothing was scratched on the inside it was all packed nicely once I got all the packaging off, it was probably one of the easiest e-bikes I've ever assembled. It went very quick. All I had to do was basically slide in the handlebars and then put on the pedals. And I had to just make sure that I had the right pedal for the right side of the bike and the left for the left side of the bike. They're threaded properly when you install those. It came with a wrench, so I didn't need any tools like that. And then that was it. I was pretty much good to go. I didn't have to install the LED light like I've had to install on some of the previous e-bikes that I've had. I didn't have to install any fenders. A rear front and rear fender that comes with this. The kickstand was already on it. So pretty easy and quick to install. Now KBO is marketing this as your best choice for your first e-bike and the way they're doing that is number one they're keeping the price low. So this comes in at $6.99 which is about the lowest I've seen for a folding e-bike. It also has a lot of features on it that you don't normally find on your introductory e-bikes like the shock absorbers up here on the front forks. Gives you a little bell, it comes in handy when you are on the bike paths. The LCD display is large, gives you a lot of information. It has a thumb throttle here on the left. So KBO makes a large variety of e-bikes out there. You can check out their webpage and see all the uh, multitudes of um, sizes and uh, different types of e-bikes you can get, folding e-bikes, regular sized bikes, um, bikes for commuting, uh, bikes for off-road, etc. But they're marketing this as your best choice for your first e-bike. But so far I've been pretty pleased of what I've seen from the little bit. I'm going to take this and do a couple long distance uh, tests with it. I'll take you with me on that. But let's just go over some of the features real quick. So if we start down in the front here, we have 20 inch tires. They're three inches wide. You have disc brakes and those are mechanical disc brakes. You're usually not going to find hydraulic brakes on a 6 99 e-bike. As you work your way up, it does have an LED light up in the front. It provides good illumination. You have your shock absorbing forks here. I really like to have shock absorbers on my forks, especially in an e-bike. Once you start getting comfortable on an e-bike, you start traveling a little bit quicker and you start noticing all the little lumps and bumps that you find in your pathway. So it's nice to have the shock absorbers up there. Your handlebars fold down here, but also they're adjustable. Some of the folding e-bikes that I checked out, um, you were not able to adjust them. It came with one size. And if it was like my wife, <laughs> the handlebars might've been up here. She'd be down here. And it might be a good look if you're easy rider, but if you're my wife and her size trying to ride an e-bike with the high handlebars and a low seat, that just doesn't work for you. So it's nice that it has this telescoping handlebar here. Also on the handlebar shaft, you have some incremental numbers on here. So it's easy to set and remember what your uh, height is for the handlebars, if you have multiple riders, or if you're gonna fold this up and uh, try to make it as compact as possible. It has the same set of numbers on the seat. It's easy to dial back to the proper position for your seat. So I do like that feature. As we work our way to the main frame, this is where the battery is held. It has a nice paint job. This comes in multiple colors. You can get this in a blue or a pink or a green, a white and a black. 
There are two screws here if you want to put a water bottle cage on there. And then this is where you would uh, unfold it and your battery is contained on the inside. The battery is held in by a key, so you have to have the key if you want to take your battery out. Uh, that way nobody can steal your battery easily. Shimano gear selector system, it's a uh, basically thumb and forefinger on, on the right side of the handlebars here. Dials through easily. Also, it comes with the fenders and it comes with a rack on the back. There is a headlight, but there is no tail light. So if you're looking to get a tail light, it's, it, you could probably buy yourself a battery LED one and throw it in the same mounts where the tail light is here. Now, a lot of times when I assemble these e-bikes, there's usually a little adjustments that need to be made, either with the disc brakes or maybe the gear shifter. But when I assembled this, the only thing, it was just rubbing a little bit on the one disc brake and all I had to do was just back it off a little bit. Tweak the adjuster on the brake assembly, it took me about five seconds and everything was good. I took it for a quick ride, nothing was rubbing. I just did all the gears, they snapped right into place. So that was nice, because a lot of times when I get an e-bike, that's not always the case. We'll just go over a couple more tech specs of the bike. So the bike is a total of 55 pounds. If you take the battery out, it's 48 pounds. So not too terribly heavy for an e-bike. It has a 500 watt brushless geared hub motor in the back. The total payload weight is 280 pounds. Um, that also includes the rack being able to hold 55 pounds on the back of the rack here. Now the range of this bike on throttle only can go about 25 miles. If you're just using pedal assist, you can extend that up to 45 miles. The recommended rider height is from four foot seven all the way up to six foot three. So that fits in the category between Karen and I, if either one of us want to take this on a trip and use it. So that works out perfectly for us. The battery inside is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hours lithium battery. From completely empty, it'll recharge in four to six hours. It does come with a charger, it comes uh, with the pedals, it comes with a manual, it comes with the battery charger, and it comes with one wrench. That's all you need to assemble this. So everything you need to get this up and running. The maximum speed that this will do throttle only is 20 miles per hour. We're gonna test that out. And then same thing with pedal assist. It peaks out around 20 miles per hour. We'll check that one out also. All right, but enough about the specs. Let's take this on the road and go for a little ride. All right, we're gonna do our first speed test here. This is just gonna be the throttle only. I've got a little bit of straightaway. It's a little bit bumpy here. Got 17 miles per hour. I think I'm going on a little bit of an incline right now. I'm topping out at 19 right now. I took the bike for a quick ride yesterday in our development and I did top out at 22 and a half miles per hour. That could have a little bit of wind variable. Wind was at my back. How we're doing here if we're going up a little bit of an incline or not. I'm going to turn around and go over the same area. And uh, use throttle only in the reverse direction just to make sure I'm not going up of a hill or a little optical illusion or anything like that. I weigh about 194 pounds. This bike is good for people up to 250 pounds. You got 18 miles, 19 miles, 20. Just a little bit over 20 miles per hour, 20 and a half. So the rating on this bike is 20 miles per hour with throttle only. Next, I am going to go ahead and use the pedals. I'm going to go up into uh, level five of assist mode. I'm going to top out my gears here. 16 miles an hour, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Just a little side note, this pedals like a, a regular bike, like it's not an electric bike. I've had some electric bikes that when you're pedaling it, there feels like there's some resistance. It might have to deal with some of the extra weight of an e-bike. But this pedaled very easy and I was kind of surprised by that. So with so pedaling in the hardest gear and 
using level five on the assist, I got up to 21 miles per hour. Let's go in the reverse direction just to see if there's any difference. 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, almost 22. If you have it in one of the assist modes, let's say even level assist number one, like I have now, and if you're starting from a stop, it does give you a little bit of the kick that you need to be prepared for at the beginning. That's the precaution you should take with all e-bikes. They all feel a little different than just your pedal bikes when they give you that power assist. A lot of people aren't ready for that. Pedal smooth. If I shift the gears, gear shifting is smooth. Gear four, five, six, and seven. On a flat road, six seems to be the most comfortable for me. So in pedal assist mode, they are saying that you can get a range up to 45 miles and then in just throttle only 25 miles. This is going to vary though depending on how much you weigh, if you're carrying any cargo. So someone like Karen would probably have no problem meeting that 45 miles where I might get a little less. It's springtime in northern Ohio right now and I bogged down a little bit of mud here in this field. Anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows you step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. <laughs> Yes, right. Now the tires do provide some traction. I'm just giving a little bit of throttle and just a little bit with foot power at the same time and I got through this little bog down area with no problem. So all in all, when I do these reviews, you are trying to find something negative to say about this product. And really, I can't. For the price of what you're paying and the quality of the bike, it's a pretty decent deal. Let's get this back home. I'll clean it up a little bit and we'll test it out, putting it in the uh, back of a pickup truck with a tonneau cover, in the back of a hatchback, and in the back seat. All right, let's talk about transporting. Um, I have the bike all folded up here. They are cumbersome to move around if you're not secure in them. When they're in this position, you pick it up, you know, it's gonna wanna flap around a little bit. All folding bikes are like that. But I would recommend taking the, like this is just one end of a ratchet strap. It's got the little um, circle there that you can tie into. But I, I'm not even gonna go around a wheel with the spokes if you're worried about messing up your spokes. So I'm just coming around the forks here. I'm gonna use the bike rack on the back, the rack on the back tire, and then I'm just gonna complete my loop and use that to hold these two parts together. So when I'm picking it up and moving around, I can grab it here by the ratchet strap. And then if I wanna grab it on the other end, it's easy to pick up and move around. Put up on the truck find straps that actually have two loops on each end which might be a little bit helpful if you find like a around four foot one because that way you just loop it through one of the loops and then you have a loop that you could use to grasp onto. One thing I haven't encountered is a folding e-bike that would fit underneath a tonneau cover as you can see here. Let me raise up the, the camera so you can be level with the top of my tonneau cover. So as you can see here even if I manipulate this around a little bit the seats all the way down. I can move those handlebars out of the way, but I'm still gonna be above the height of my tonneau cover. So if you have a cap on your truck, you're golden. If not, and you still wanna get this under your tonneau cover like I do, I would recommend saving a piece of foam from one of your deliveries and putting that down and then laying one of your tires down on it. So if you're gonna lay the back tire on it, you're gonna to wanna to put that foam against where the gear shifter is wasn't too terrible. You can kind of see how much room it's going to take in the back of the pickup truck. And then if I want to pull my tonneau cover over, I 
it's going to fit in there and stay out of the weather. I don't have to worry about strapping it to the back of my RV or trying to put a bike rack back here and uh, having it out in the weather when we're traveling. So it will squeeze in. There's probably about uh, two or three inches of clearance right now. I could probably finagle a little bit more if I needed to, but a lot of that is from the cushion that I'm using down here, a good four inches. So plenty of room to put this on its side. But okay, this is a Ford Escape. And if I pull the back seat up a little bit, I don't collapse it, I can just pull it up. I can pretty much get this in here. I had to take the steering wheel out of the post. I could probably get a second bike right next to this. I could squeeze this over a little bit more, get another bike in here, but I don't have one to show you that. So if you really wanted to, with a little bit of finagling, you could get two of these in the back of a hatchback. So it will fit in the back seat of a vehicle if you have a four-door. All right, I will show you here once you get to your destination just how long it takes to assemble this thing and be able to go for your ride. I'll probably be doing just a little follow-up video, maybe incorporated in one of my other videos, just on uh, using it after a couple weeks. And also, I'm going to try to run the battery out just on the throttle only, see how far I can get. We have a short little RV trip planned, so this will be nice to take it with us. Just got to unfold the pedals and it'll be ready to go. So if you're thinking about getting your first e-bike or you want something to take traveling either in an RV or in a boat, this kind of suits those needs and it's not going to break the bank. I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us. Take care everybody.